I want to teach you something about the Bible that you will not learn in church. The story about the Tower of Babel is about you. Allow me to explain. What your preacher doesn't realize is that the Bible is a book of allegory and is not meant to be taken literally. Let's delve into the hidden teaching of the Tower of Babel. Genesis chapter 11 verse 1 tells us that the whole earth was of one language and one speech. The key to receive wisdom from this verse is to understand that it's not talking about literal speaking language. It's not talking about French, English, Russian, Chinese. It's talking about a universal spiritual language that we all spoke and came from in the beginning. In the beginning was the Word and the Word was God. That great vibrational frequency of oneness that we all came from. The very source that we all vibrate into existence through. Chapter 2 tells us that we traveled from the east to another land. The key to receiving wisdom from this verse is to understand that it's not talking about the literal direction of the east. It's not talking about an external place outside of yourself. It's talking about the east that is within. The spiritual east that is symbolic of your spiritual foundation, your birth, your beginning. The sunlight is an archetype of the east because it comes and brings light into the world. It gives life to the world. And this is where they messed up. They left the east. This is symbolic of leaving their inner east. It's not a literal interpretation. It's a spiritual interpretation. So they were of one spiritual language, not a literal language, but a spiritual language. And they left the east, which was their spiritual foundation, and they traveled outside of themselves, entering into the world of ego and false identity. Verse 3 tells us that we left our east. We left the spiritual inner east and we traveled outward away from oneness. We traveled away from the spiritual oneness that we all were and we started to build and cultivate buildings with brick and mortar. The key to receiving wisdom from this verse is to understand that it is not a literal city, literal bricks. We are symbolically in this chapter building our false identity. We are building all of the divisive tools and instruments that we use to divide humanity, religion, politics, um, all of the divisive controlling things. We are crafting them. We are honing them and building them out of the world that duality is. All of the materials that exist within the realm of duality, we are creating from those, getting further and further from our spiritual east. In verse 4, we attempt to build a tower into the heavens to reach God, and we give ourselves a name. The key to receiving wisdom from this verse is to understand that we are building up our ego in this verse. We are building higher and higher up to this false image of God that we have created within our minds that approves of all of the evil and wickedness that we do and that we contrive and all of the division, the world that we are creating as we keep building our false identity in this world. We are trying to justify it by creating our own God that will approve of our evil ways, such as if you read in the Bible, you read about slavery and abusing women. This is a man-made version of God that we are attempting to build within ourselves through our politics and our religion and all of our ideology. These things are being created from a place of ego and duality. Verses 5 and 6 tell us that the Lord came down to the city and looked around and said, Behold, the man speaks one language. Nothing he can imagine will be restrained from him. The key to receiving wisdom from these verses is to understand the word imagine. Nothing that the man can imagine will be restrained. You have to understand that we are manifesting all of this into existence. Everything begins in a spiritual seed within the mind and manifests itself outward into the physical realm. 
of duality. And the God in verses 5 and 6 is not the God. It is not source. It is not the all. It is the man-made God that they have created in their own minds that is approving everything that they have done, everything that they have imagined into existence, all of their divisiveness, all of their division. This is their version of God that is approving everything that they are doing. And this is exactly what most of humanity has done. It has created a fictional God that approves of all of their division, whether it be for their religion or their side of politics or anything else that they have created within themselves or have joined themselves with in the external world. They find a way that their God, their version of God, approves of this and justifies all of their killings, all of their bad doings. It's all justified through the fake version of God that man has created within their own psyche. In verses 7 and 8, the Lord comes down and confounds our language so that we can't understand each other. It causes confusion and we're all scattered abroad. The key to receiving wisdom from these verses is to understand that there is no man in the sky with a beard and a robe. He's not black. He's not white. He's not any ethnicity or color. These verses are talking about the all, the source of all existence, and the universal laws are now showing themselves to us through the cause and effect. The universal principles, everything that we have created and done in this world with our divisive ways is starting to reap the fruit. We are reaping as humanity what we have sown. And the rest of the chapter is about a bunch of fake genealogy. The only hope we have is to travel back to that sacred East within and embrace that sacred monad that exists within each and every one of us. The only hope we have for stability and refuge is in the kingdom of God. And where does the Bible tell us the kingdom of God is? The kingdom of God is within. Stay resolute, stay strong, and stay blessed.